Star Wars 7x7 episode 2182. Today we're going to circle back to Alphabet Squadron's sequel, Shadowfall, and we're going to do something very specific. We're going to tie it in to the information that we've recently learned about Star Wars Squadrons. Punch it! Hey Rebel Riser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So, this is going to be spoilery for Shadowfall, the second novel in the Alphabet Squadron trilogy by Alexander Freed. However, it's only going to be very minorly spoilery. It's not going to be anything that affects the story at all. It's only going to be flagging a couple of things for you to keep an eye out for as you are reading Shadowfall and going, hey, you know, that has something to do with Star Wars Squadrons, but it's not going to affect anything about your story enjoyment of Shadowfall. So just so you know, but I'm going to tell you a couple of things from Shadowfall. So early on in the book, there is a meeting happening between Karen Aiden, who is our New Republic intelligence officer who is running the working group that is trying to find and destroy Shadowing, and Erica Quell, who is the head of Alphabet Squadron, the Imperial Defector, who is helping track down her former Imperial uh, squadron mates and whatnot. And so as they are discussing this, there's an exchange that they have. They're talking about resources, and Quell asks if... Vanguard Squadron is available for a scouting op, and Aiden's response is, Vanguard's on a mission to try to ameliorate the shortage of starships going around. It's a special mission from Syndulla's special consultant, Lyndon Javes. And I guess the way that Aiden says it <laughs> has some charge to it, to which Quell says, professional rivalry or personal? And Aiden's response is, the man likes to second guess the rest of us, even when he's not invited. And that's as much as we learn about Lyndon Javes. However, it turns out that Lyndon Javes just recently got an entry on the StarWars.com databank related to Star Wars Squadrons. He, in fact, is the gentleman that we see giving the briefing in that initial uh, trailer reveal for Squadrons next to Harris and Dula. And here's what we know about him. They say that he is an experienced pilot and instructor, rose through the ranks of the Rebellion after the destruction of Alderaan by hunting Imperial capital ships. Though he's still a combat pilot at heart, Lyndon found he had a knack for command, coordinating several successful missions behind Imperial lines. Now, as the Galactic War enters a new phase, Lyndon has been given command of his own squadron and a classified assignment for the New Republic. And the command of the squadron would be Vanguard Squadron. Now, here's what else we've learned about Vanguard Squadron, courtesy of the databank. They operate largely in the Bormea sector, handling pockets of Imperial resistance and defending key New Republic planets like Chandrila and Brental IV. They specialize in rapid response attacks, high-risk res high rescue missions, excuse me, and ambushing Imperial capital ships going by their squadron motto, Fearless to the Finish. Recently, Vanguard has been picked to tackle a special covert assignment. What is that assignment? Well, that goes back to Karen Aiden's thing about Vanguard being assigned to a mission where they're trying to ameliorate the lack of starships going around. In other words, they are trying to get more starships into the fray. And... Now we get to turn our attention to the new reveals about Star Wars Squadrons that have come directly from Electronic Arts. They recently revealed six locations for the events of Star Wars Squadrons, and three of them have to do with this area called the Ringali Nebula, which is in the Bormea sector and is all around planets that are related to ones that we've already heard of, like Chandrila, for example. So... We have Sisubo, which is the seventh planet in the Chandrila system in the Bormea sector. That's one of the locations. And it says, surrounded by the remnants of salvaged Imperial ships and part of Project Starhawk, Sisubo's debris field is a threat to any capital ship that risks flying inside. All right, so now we have salvaging Imperial ships and Project Starhawk. Project Starhawk was a thing that was first referenced in, I think, the Aftermath novels, going all the way back to the Nadiri Starhawk that showed up 
that was meant to be something that could compete with Imperial Star Destroyers, like a brand new type of capital ship. And in fact, the Nadiri Dockyards are part of the Star Wars Squadron storyline as well. There's a location here that says, the Dockyards are a starship manufacturing facility hidden deep inside the Bormea sector on the fringes of the Ringali Nebula. The New Republic will defend the Dockyards at all costs. Dun dun dun. And lastly, related to the Ringali Nebula, there's Galatan, that's the shattered moon of Galatan that we heard about previously. A remote moon in the dangerous but beautiful Ringali Nebula. The forces of the turbulent nebula have pulled the moon apart into an asteroid field of still molten fragments. So a lot of the action of Star Wars Squadrons is going to take place in and around the Bormea sector, in and around the Ringali Nebula, and apparently is going to have to do with salvaging ships and using them to become part of either the New Republic Starfleet or the Imperial Starfleet, I guess, as a potential thing, at least not letting it fall into Imperial hands. And the reason I say that is because there is a thing in Shadowfall where we spend some time with the 204th, AKA Shadow Wing. And one of the things that they do, one of the operations that they conduct is an operation to try to salvage some TIE fighters in order to rebuild the Starfighter complement of Shadow Wing. And how do things wind up with Star Wars Squadrons? Obviously, we don't know how that single player story will end. However, there is a moment in Shadowfall where Syndulla's aide Stornvein, S-T-O-R-N-V-E-I-N, asks about a certain maneuver that they are potentially going to employ in a battle that happens in Shadowfall. And Stormvane says, you're certain about this. And the narrative says her favorite aide had accompanied her through the hell of the mission with Vanguard. And the timing of that statement is such that it should be happening after the events of Star Wars Squadron. So whatever it was that happened, and by extension, whatever happens in Star Wars Squadrons is apparently quite the story. So there you go, the links to Star Wars Squadrons that are hidden inside Shadowfall. Not so hidden anymore, but <laughs> when you see them, when you read it, or when you're listening to it, if you're catching the audiobook version, then it'll make you go ping, ping, ping when <laughs> it comes across your radar. And that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you so much for joining me for it, as always, and may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2020 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.